It's day three of the party congress, and we've been waiting here in the parking lot of the Ngato Hotel for almost an hour. We see a lot of the government officials on their phones, perhaps trying to figure out where exactly the group of press is going to be going today. We took a short drive through Pyongyang, a beautiful Sunday morning, didn't know where we were going, and we've just arrived at the People's House of Culture. We don't know who's inside the building, but if you look at this row of shiny black Mercedes here and, and specifically look at the license plate numbers, that would indicate these are some of the highest level members of the Workers' Party of Korea. We've been told to bring all of our gear, including our backpacks inside. We've been given our passports as well for some kind of a security check. What, what happened? What happened? The program has changed. Program changed? changed. Where are we going? Back to hotel, back to take hotel. lunch, and rest. Well, there you go. We're headed back to the hotel. The program has changed. After three hours of waiting at our hotel, we were all told to rush and gather in front of the television for this. State TV broke in for a special report, which turned out to be the leader's full speech that he gave on Saturday to the Workers' Party Congress. It's been going on for well over two hours. Of course, we already read the full transcript. It's the first eight pages of the morning paper, coverage on the front and back pages. If you're looking for any major policy changes or announcements, you won't find them in this speech. The leader talked about North Korean history from 1980 until today. He did say this country won't use its nuclear weapons unless provoked first, but we've heard that before. So in the end, even though we're inside this country covering the Workers' Party Congress, the state-controlled media continues to be our best and only source of information. Will Ripley, CNN, Pyongyang.